Hi everybody, this is Jerry from sgdbtutorials.com and I'm back with the second part of the Macro Generator Pro three-part tutorials. As I mentioned in segment one, I divided the second tutorial into four sections. In this, the second section of tutorial two, we will be covering how to set up your tablet to Macro Generator Pro as well as discussing all of the global settings options. And now on to section two, tablet connection through the global settings. Next is tablet connection, and it's actually a pretty cool feature. Here you can set up your tablet connection or turn it on or off. You can also set up your tablet with the tablet tick box under the commands tab on the left side of the GUI. If you have a tablet, let's set it up now. Go to general settings, tablet connection, Tablet settings. On the first setup, you should get a firewall warning. Go ahead and click Allow Access to continue. Your IP address from your router should show up under Tablet Connection, and both the Port Socket Test and Server Test buttons should be green. If you intend to email the connection settings to yourself, enter your email under Mail. The next two rows allows you to set the size of the macro buttons and transport keys. The tablet GUI section allows changes to the background color, font size, and leaving the delete blanks tick box checked removes blank macro buttons. Once your tablet is connected, making these types of changes will require you to refresh your tablet. The last row has all of the connection options. You have the options to connect and show the link address, connect and send link addresses via email, that's where the email address came in, connect and save link addresses as a file, and then the cancel button. You can connect by way of the Macro Generator tablet app or just by using your browser. I'm going to show you how to connect using the tablet app. I already have the app installed and all that is needed is the IP address of my router and the port number. Go to the tablet app and enter your IP address and port value shown on the tablet management panel. Return to the tablet management panel and for this example, we're doing nothing more than connecting Click the Connect and Show the Link Address button. Now on your tablet, click the Connect to Macro Generator PC to view the macros in the tablet container. Once the macros are visible, you will be able to run the macros. You will also be able to control playback with the transport keys. Our next category is the GUI skin setting. Here you can change the look of the Macro Generator's main GUI. Just so you know, no changes can be made to the default GUI skin. To make changes, you have to create a new skin and name it. Click New, type in the skin's name, and click New to apply the skin to the GUI skin list. And all of the GUI skin settings options will be made available to you. You can change window borders, window colors, button colors, menu colors, and font style, the global font style, and the input box color and font style. After you've made all of your changes, click Set as Current Skin, and the Apply New Skin confirmation panel will open. Clicking Yes will make this your new skin. Click Close to restart the application. When Macro Generator opens, your new skin will be visible. You can keep the new skin setting if you want, or click Delete to remove it. Click Restore to Default. The default skin will become your current skin. Click Close and Restart Macro Generator. When Macro Generator restarts, the default skin will be active. Next is the Layout Settings option. If you have preferred panel placements for the main GUI, and you want to save them for future use, this is where you would do that. 
You can also load, save, save as, delete, rename, and if needed, restore the GUI layout to the default settings. Our last category under the General Settings banner is Global Settings. This section covers settings for Container Tab Position, EDIUS Effect Application, Global Settings, Panel Focus and Position, Storage Path Locations, Macro and Folder Settings, and the speed at which the macro is applied. Under Container, this gives you the option to place the tab groups at the top or bottom of the GUI. Double-clicking EDIUS will open the EDIUS Effects panel. At the top of this panel, you will see the When Creating New Macros, Set Open Panel Settings After Applied tick box. What this means is once you create a new effect macro, and apply it to a clip, the Effects GUI setting panel will open. As an example, here is what happens with the tick box checked on the three-way color correction macro. This tick box will save you from having to manually set the option in each macro. Where this is particularly useful, is when multiple macros are automatically created in effect folders. Click on the Effect tab on the left side of the GUI. Expand the main folder and then the Audio Effects folder. I'll be using Ozone 7 Advanced for this example. I do realize many of you won't have this plugin, but this procedure will work with video, audio, third party, native, individual, or folder macro creation. To start the process, select the container in which the macro will be stored. Select the Ozone 7 Advanced folder in the effect list. To start the process, right-click and choose Create New Macros Ozone 7 Advanced. Click Yes to confirm that you want to create the new macros. Choose your macro color style and each effect within the folder will be created. Place an audio clip on the timeline and run one of the macros. And yes, the application GUI does open automatically. There are two options for applying effects in EDIUS. On the majority of EDIUS 6.5, 7, and 8 systems, the Apply All Effects with Keyboard option will work just fine. However, if you are using EDIUS 6, it is recommended that you select the Apply All Effects with Mouse option. There may be instances where some specific effects will work better if the macro setting is changed to Mouse. You can change this setting on a macro by macro basis by editing the individual macro. The final setting on this panel is the location at which the effect is placed on a clip by Add to Timeline. In other words, this is similar to how you would drag a transition to the timeline. Leave this setting at default. Global Settings has three options. Clicking the List Macros in Alphabetical Order tick box will arrange the macros in order from A to Z. Enable Track Mouse gives an accurate readout of the true location of the mouse cursor. This is important when using the Apply All Effects with Mouse setting. And the last selection is Save Macro when closing software tick box. This creates a backup of all the macros each time Macro Generator Pro is closed. The backup will be saved to the selected Macro Generator backup path. The Enable Track Mouse and Save Macro when closing software tick boxes are installed with the tick boxes checked by default.
Under Panels, you can choose whether or not the main GUI or Favorites panel retains focus over all other screens. Here you can also reset the main GUI and Favorites desktop location. I briefly mentioned the backup path while explaining the global settings option. Within Path, you can set your default backup paths for Macro Generator Pro, the EDIUS backup, the main export path, and the .exe file for any external video or audio software. At the beginning of this tutorial, I said I would explain how the main GUI panel was resized. Macro size is where you make the changes. Here you can choose to set the macros as a fixed size or a scalable size. With fixed, no matter how big the GUI is, all of the macros will remain the same size. With scalable, as you change the size of the main GUI, the macros buttons columns, and rows change size based on your settings. In the next boxes, you can have a default size for new macros and new folders. The bottom row of buttons allows you to set and restore presets to all macros and change the default macro preset. The same set of buttons are on the right side of the panel for folders. After making any changes in this panel, click Apply to accept the changes. It would be advisable to refresh your tablet in order to see the changes. The last option in this section is the speed of macro. This sets how fast the steps of the macro are applied to your clip. On slower systems, you may have to lower the setting to anywhere between 50 to 70. Newer systems work well at the default 100 setting. You can always try different settings to see how they work on your system. If you made any changes within global settings, click Apply before closing. That brings us to the close of Section 2. In Section 3, we'll be dealing mainly with EDIUS settings and how they interact with Macro Generator Pro. For more tutorials or information as they become available, you can go to www.macrogenerator.net or the Macro Generator YouTube channel at this address on your screen. Thanks for watching and make sure to check the links for new material.